Well, I, I have to ask you the million dollar question, which I think you have a really unique perspective on because your company has gone down the Netflix rabbit hole with two different approaches. You've had a project that was already produced get picked up by Netflix for distribution, Dream, and then you've had the Dream where you worked entirely from pre-production to post on a Netflix film. So million dollar question, how do you get a project on Netflix? Okay, I have an answer. So I wanna caveat anyone who's gonna listen to this. All right, so I will tell you how this happens. Not just Netflix, like the, how do you get a film? Netflix, sure, that's a great, that's a, I, I can talk about that, but how do you get your movie legitimate financing and distribution? That's what we're, like, how do you make a movie? That's the question that we're asking, right? That's the million dollar question. How do you get a film on Netflix? How do you, how do you make a movie? All right, I have, I have an answer for you. Okay, but it's important that when we try and accomplish something that is as difficult as what, like, like let's, let's slow down and be self-aware about the question we just asked. How do you make a movie? I don't know, how do you get in the NFL? How do you get in the, how do you become, a, we're, we're talking about an unbelievably difficult thing to do. So let's not pretend that we're talking about two cheat codes and you're in. This is a, this is a very, very difficult thing. So one thing I like to say, and I didn't go to film school, so we just kind of figured out how to build something from the ground. Like I, sometimes being a, um, a producer or just like a small business owner, like that identity is sometimes mixed for me because I've just kind of only ever known this from a building a business perspective of it. So the first thing is we have to look the monster in the face. I'll, I'll tell you what it looks like and understand what we're up against. This is so important. If you're romanticizing these, these, these false narratives about how this works, it's important to be brutally honest with yourself about what the monster looks like. So here's what the monster looks like. Here's what we're up against. First, there's something called writer pods and development deals. Some people have heard of these before. Basically what we're saying is, and actually I know that I was talking to a producer recently about this. Um, if you're Warner, Netflix, Amazon, almost any of the major players, they have, they'll give over a hundred different legitimate, seasoned, proven track record, writers, producers, directors, talent, half a mil, 750, a mil a year to just think of ideas. And if they turn out great, they'll make them. Because you know Disney Plus has so much money, giving a writer half a million dollars for the year just to think of a couple ideas literally is cash flow that they have. So that's important to recognize that the best minds in the world are already being paid inside by the major companies to develop content. So it seems like there's more content than ever. That's true, but not for you. It's true for people with development deals. It's not necessarily true for us, the independent filmmaker. That's depressing, but it's important to recognize this is true. The second le level of the monster, agencies. CAA, William Morris, pick your agency. They all have relationships with talent, directors, people that are constantly putting together ideas and pitches and screenplays with their friends and other people that they're connected with within their agencies. They're packaging projects. They're putting together these amazing packages. They're pitching them regularly back and forth because they have long relationships with these agencies. Got it. And all these people have proven track records. So number one, the idea that an executive, if you're a, an up and coming screenwriter, independent filmmaker who, is, who doesn't have a big track record, the idea that an executive is going to read your screenplay is a lie. It's never going to happen. It will never, I promise you, it will never happen. You have to stop thinking that, and I, that's not, I have a solution that we're going to get to in a second. But don't trap yourself into a false narrative that's going to break your heart. Let me break it for you right now. Break your heart right now, and then we're going to together come together and figure out how to make a plan. But the false, and also the world has changed. Maybe that used to be the case back in the day. Maybe that's how it used to be. I'm 29. I'm a millennial filmmaker. I think I'm seeing how this is working in the modern era with Netflix, you know, and streaming and changing the game. And now post COVID, we have theaters changing their business models. This is the deal. They need security and knowing that this film is going to make money and succeed. So why on earth, if you're, you're a Netflix executive, put yourself in their seat. I'm, well, I'm going to sift through 50 screenplays of people I've never heard of before when I can talk to people with proven track records and followings. So that's the monster. Let's look the monster in the face and, ex and understand that it exists. So how do we beat the monster? Okay, there's two paths I see that you can take to get around the monster, okay? Path one, this is gonna sound trite, 
It's not. I mean this so seriously. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, pick your thing. Create consistently enough, good enough, at a high enough level for a long enough period of time to build an audience and get good at what you do. Instagram influencers, TikTokers, YouTubers have agents. Why? Because they thought to themselves, I have something interesting to say. They started making that. After a couple of years of doing it, they got better at it. And all of a sudden they have 50,000, 100,000, a quarter of a million, half a million followers. Netflix, Netflix, HBO, Hulu executives no longer have to sit and sift through who's going to make it because the internet's doing it for them. The internet does it for you. Go on YouTube. This thing, this short film posted got 100 views. Maybe you think it's the best thing that's ever been made because it's your short film. That's fine. It has 100 views. This person's short film has 2.5 million views. It's public. It's public information out there for anyone to see. Start creating. So create until you become a talent with an audience. And you're saying, wait a minute. You're telling me that I have to become independently famous before I get a movie deal? Yes. What do you think we're talking about? We're talking about making movies. Like we're not talking about getting an accountant's job. We're talking about making movies. So path one is create until you become a legit, build an audience, create, become a legitimate talent. That's option one. And you have, there's no excuse anymore. You can go do it for free right now. That's option one. Option two is what I did. Option two is find these people as they're coming up and be the person to add unbelievable value to their life. Matt Diavel, the minimalists are coming up. They need someone to help them really make a film. We can help do that. Right now I have another influencer with half a million followers. I have another, another person that I connected with. We have a bunch of big comedians that are up and coming in New York City that we've gotten to meet and be relationships with. I'm taking people that are on their come up and I'm coming into their life and really listen to what they want to say. I'm not trying to change what they're doing. I'm observing what they're doing. I'm trying to clear paths and ahead of where they're already walking and being an added value mentor, peer, friend, producer in their life who's trying to help them move in the right direction. And when they do, they'll work with me when their thing comes because I've built trust and long trust with them. Option two is be the person, find these people and be the person that adds unbelievable value to their life. Those are the two weapons you have to get around the system. You have to either become a talent yourself or you have to be the person that adds value to up and coming talent. Now, I will end this with something I think your viewers might like, which is that I will give you what I see as the four horsemen of a sellable project. These are the four things that you have that, that make your product a viable product, make your film viable. And, I, and I'll do a case study with lessons now at the end of it to, to flush this out, okay? So here's the four things you need to have a sellable project. Talent, director, story, timing. Talent secures a base audience. It lets the finance, like I'm trying to think about this, I'm a financier. I'm trying to buy a product that is as low risk and high ceiling as I could possibly have. That's all that I'm trying to do. So really good talent. This is an age old truth. Talent secures a base audience. It proves that people will come and watch this. Director secures execution that what we're going to do is actually going to work and it reduces financial risk. So I have my talent I want and I have the director I want. In the director category, we could put production company and we could put other things that kind of secure that level of really making sure that this is going to work and be good. But we're talking about security of the, the financing. Three is story. The story provides a unique take on a universal experience. I think that all stories are ultimately doing that. Moonlight is a really powerful movie because Although it's ultimately a movie about acceptance and self-worth, it's a movie about that through the eyes of an LGBT black kid. So it's a unique, it's a unique take on, an, on a universal truth. And then lastly is timing. Do people care about that story right now? So case study with less is now. Talent. Joshua and Ryan are literally the leaders of the minimalism movement. Perfect. Director. Matt Diavella, as of the time that we made the film, had 2.5 million YouTube subscribers himself. So he functions in this like talent director combo. I don't mean to put him on pedestal with like a Christopher Nolan, but it's a similar dynamic of like, oh, it's a Nolan movie. I'm gonna watch this because it's a Nolan movie. We had tons of people go watch Lessons Now because they wanted to see Matt's documentary. 
So he's like a talent director combo and already had a relationship with the talent. So there's a great relationship there. And Matt's good at what he does. Plus we add us to the mix and what we do as producers in a production company, we secure that this is going to be a low risk, high quality product. Boom. Story. The journey from a traditional consumeristic life with little happiness to a life of letting go and finding joy. People generally resonate with that idea and timing. That story was released on New Year's Day, 2021, amidst the global pandemic, where people were looking to downsize, heal, and find joy in their lives again. Talent, director, story, timing. That's, I'm, and I'm not, and also, you can have all four of those things. You can have stacked the dice so it's a 90% hit rate. And sometimes the 10% still hits. You have to recognize that that's what we're doing here. We're not sitting here trying to make some easy thing happen. You wanna know how to make a movie? Look, be honest about what the monster is, figure out your unique way around it and do everything you can to stack the deck in your favor and hope that things hit the right way. But I think that's the brutal honest answer to that question.